In this video, I'm going to talk about how to draw vector diagram for a Y connected load as well as a delta connected load. So here is the first one. It's a Y connected load. Whenever you see a Y connected load or source, it doesn't matter. Three important points you need to remember all the time. VL equal to square root three times VPH. Line voltage is always square root three times phase voltage. So remember, here is the phase voltage between A and neutral. Okay, phase A and neutral. So VPH equal to VAN. So that's very small compared to the line value VAB. Okay, so the line voltage is always higher than the phase value, which is square root three times. Now the second one, second important point is line current. Here is the line current. So the source is connected somewhere here. Source is connected here. So current is coming from there. So that's a line current. The line current is same as the phase current. In Y connected load, line current is same as the phase current. That's a second important point. Third important point is line voltage leads the phase voltage by 30 degrees. So this is the third important point. You need to remember these three points whenever you see a Y connected load. Okay. When it comes to the power, power is same whether it is tor or delta, it doesn't matter. P equal to square root 3 times VL, IL, cos theta or you can use 3 times VPH, IPH, cos theta. Since it's a 3 phase, it's 3 times a phase voltage and phase current times power factor. Now our goal is how to draw the vector diagram. Here we are drawing a vector diagram. So whenever we draw vector diagram for the Y connected load, it is always based on the phase voltage. Okay, so VAN, VBN, VCN. Um, the phase voltages in Y connected load are always 120 degrees apart. So VAN equal to V at an angle of zero. In this case, I'm taking the um, angle zero. How do we define this angle? So basically that angles the angle tells you and in, uh, in the generator where that rotor I mean that rotor is called armature okay north pole and south pole what are the positions of this north pole and south pole okay if it is like this probably I'm going to take that as zero if I have phase a right there phase B phase C okay so I mean don't worry too much about this so VAN equal to V at an angle of zero. So uh, VAN, VBN always lags 120 degrees because whenever this is rotating in clockwise direction, it will see phase A first and after 120 degrees, it will see phase B. So that's the reason minus 120 and VCN is minus 240. So this is phase C and it will see after 240 degrees of seeing phase A. So VAN, VBN, and VCN. Okay. So draw those three phase values. Now to draw the line voltage, VAB equal to VAN minus VBN. So VAB is voltage at this point minus voltage at this point. That point is B. So VAN minus VBN. Please look into my previous video. You can clearly see how to find VAB. Um, now, so here is my VAN. Now I need to do negative VBN. So what I what I did, I extended VBN in the opposite direction to get negative VBN. Okay, so that's my negative VBN. So the angle between VAN and negative VBN is 60 degrees here because it's exactly bisects between VA bisects the VAN VCN. Now magnitude of VAN and VBN are same so VAB is going to bisect uh, the angle is going to be 30 degrees okay so you stand at one point rotate the vectors okay so you will see VAB coming first then after 30 degrees VAN so you can say line voltage leads the phase voltage by 30 degrees now based on the load you will have current ian so say for example i have a load impedance of 4 plus j3 so 4 is the resistance value plus j3 is the uh, inductive reactance whenever you see inductive reactance that's a lagging power factor 
okay so that means current lags the voltage so how do you find that angle the uh, lagging angle you can find theta equal to 10 inverse of 3 over 4 that's one way to do it or another way is find the power factor cos theta which is r over z r value is 4 z value is square root of 4 square plus 3 square okay so 4 over 5 which is 0 0.8 0 0.8 lagging that lagging indicates this is uh, inductive load so based on that theta is cos inverse of 0 0.8 which is 36.86 degrees so that's how i got that 36.86 or you can find theta value tan inverse of 3 by 4 that will give you 36.86 degrees um, this is symmetrical load so whenever you see symmetrical load each branch is going to have the same amount of current since symmetrical load i'm just drawing for only one phase that should be good enough i mean if i draw too many lines it's confusing so for the symmetrical load one phase a drawing is good enough okay so this is a very good example a good vector diagram for a y connected load now say for example in another case you have van equal to 120 at an angle of minus 30 okay so it's the same vector diagram for any other problem or any other example the only thing is the van is going to shift 30 degrees down um, down here so basically all you need to do is rotate this vector 30 degrees in clockwise direction then you will see um, you will see the new vector diagram for the new example so this is for a star connected load now coming to the delta connected so whenever you see a delta connected load three important points you need to remember vl equal to vph line voltage equal to phase voltage in delta il equal to square root three times iph you can see this is my line current and this is my phase current so what happened here so if you apply kcl kirchhoff's current ladder so iab is going there and ica is coming in so if if i apply kcl at node a at node a at node a apply kcl so il line current equal to iab minus ica okay if i apply kcl at that point so that's how i can find the line current um, so line current is always larger than the phase current and third important point is line current always likes the phase current so these three are the important points whenever you see delta delta load or delta source these three points has to come into your mind now to draw the vector diagram for delta connected load we always use the phase currents so iab ibc ica all three of these currents are 120 degrees apart okay now to get il which is iab minus ica so this is 120 degrees i'm going to extend my ica in the opposite direction so this is negative ica now if i combine iab minus ica so here it must be 60 degrees this vector diagram this is my iaa this is the line current okay the angle here must be 30 degrees now based on the load so for example say this is um 8 minus j6 so whenever you see minus j that indicates that that's a capacitive reactance capacitive load so voltage i mean current leads the voltage whenever you see this so we always take voltage as a reference so based on the voltage current always goes first so that angle um, you can find that angle theta is tan inverse of 6 over 8 i'm pretty much sure it will end up with the same angle because that's 3 over 4 36.86 degrees so my vab is going to be somewhere here this is my va i mean phase values are same as line values so vph equal to vl the angle here must be 36.86 degrees okay so this is the vector diagram for for a delta connected load now i'm going to talk about phase sequence so phase sequence is nothing but it tells us which phase 
comes next okay we have two types of phase sequences one is positive phase sequence another one is negative phase sequence okay so positive phase sequence is nothing but say for example here is a b c okay you stand at one point and rotate the vectors okay so you stand at one point rotate the vectors so positive phase sequence we have a b c okay stand there and rotate the vectors we always rotate the vectors so which which one do you see first if you stand there probably you will see b first and then c next and then a next so this b c a or if you stand here you will see a first b next c uh, next so this a b c phase sequence is called positive phase sequence a b c or b c or um or c a b okay these three are the positive phase sequence now negative phase sequence is nothing but so i have a b c okay now you stand at one point now rotate these vectors in the opposite direction okay so we will see a first um, c next b next or you can see c b a or you can see b a c these three this is a negative phase sequence positive phase sequence now if you look at a three phase motor how do we change the direction of rotation okay so to change the direction of rotation all we need to do is um, look at look at this positive phase sequence and negative phase sequence okay look at this abc okay when it is abc it is rotating in anti clockwise direction now to change the direction all i need to do is just flip these two wires okay if i flip these two wires i end up with acb okay so when when it comes acb now the rotation is changed so to change the direction of a rotation in a three phase motor all you need to do is just exchange any two phases okay so flip those two phases then the rotation of the direction will uh, will be changed okay um that's all i have for this uh, video we'll solve more examples based on the three-phase circuits in, in my future videos. Thank you.